Job chapter 18. Now I'd ask that you pray for us tonight. Tonight, let's get quiet now. Help me, workers. Look at me, girls. Hey, boys. Tonight will be the most, probably one of the most controversial messages I've ever preached. But I'm a long way past worrying about what somebody's going to think about me. I'm doing what I'm doing tonight for the Lord. And I'm doing it tonight because I believe He wants me to. I get no pleasure out of what I'm about to do. I don't have any kind of sadistic thrill out of telling people what I'm going to tell you tonight. I don't. I wish there wasn't no such place as what I'm going to tell you about tonight. But you see, I'm not as righteous as God. And God will one day show this world how much He hates sin. We're not even capable of hating sin like God hates sin. We wouldn't put somebody in hell forever. I wouldn't. You wouldn't either. We're not as righteous as God. The reason people say God wouldn't let nobody to hell is because they think God's like they are. You're so mean, you'd let them get by. And I am too. But tonight, for the first time, I'm preaching to you on the subject, a journey through the halls of hell. And I hope tonight that God will make this so real to every young person. Even if you're saved, that God would speak to your heart this evening. Please, everybody, sit down now and stay down. Sit down right now and stay down. Thank you so much. Thank you for your cooperation. Job chapter 18. Look in your Bible in Job chapter 18 and verse number 15. Brother Ray, help me over here with the lights, please. I want those top two on the left first. Job chapter 18. The Bible says in verse 15, It shall dwell in his tabernacle, because it is none of his. Brimstone shall be scattered upon his habitation. His roots shall be dried up beneath, and above shall his branch be cut off. His remembrance shall perish from the earth, and he shall have no name in the street. He shall be driven from light into darkness and chased out of the world. He shall neither have son nor nephew among his people, nor any remaining in his dwellings. They that come after him shall be astonished at his day. And they that went before, as they that went before, were affrighted. Surely are the dwellings of the wicked... And this is the place of him that knoweth not God. I want to preach tonight on a journey through the halls of hell. Whether or not you believe in hell is absolutely immaterial. Makes no difference whatsoever. Science confirms it. Science has confirmed that the deeper you go down in, this, in the ground out there, the hotter it gets. And they say that the center of the earth tonight is as hot or even hotter than the temperature on the sun. Now, ladies and gentlemen, they proved it. What people didn't believe for years and years, science has now proved is a fact. Not only that, the world confirms it. Did you know they talk about hell out there every day, all day long? It's hell this and hell that. And, tell, and the worst thing you can tell somebody is to go to hell. And they say there's no such place. They tell them on TV 500 times a night about hell. The world confirms it. I'll tell you another reason you know there's a hell. Dying sinners testify to it. Years ago, people died like they lived. Most of the time nowadays, people are so drugged up, they die in some almost unconscious state. But years ago, brother, when an atheist died, you could hear them screaming four or five uh, houses down out in the country. 
they'd die screaming, Oh God, Oh God, Oh God, don't let me go to that place. There's been people die screaming, God, get my feet out of this fire. There is testimony after testimony of avowed agnostics and atheists who when they're dying screaming, don't let these demons take me to hell. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight the world attests it. Dying sinners testify to it. Science confirms it. But all of these things are not what I believe in hell. I believe in hell tonight because the Bible says there's a place. Fifty-three times in that King James Bible the word hell is mentioned. And I wouldn't take my chances tonight that much chance over going to a place that the Bible says is there fifty-three times. You say, I don't believe in hell. Do you know for a fact it ain't there? Are you sure? You, have you got that much doubt? If you've got that much doubt, that's reason enough to get saved. If there's a 2% chance there's a hell, you don't want to take that 2% chance. No, sir. You don't want to do it. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight, I'd like for you, in your imagination, in your imagination, to go with me on a journey through the halls of hell. Now, in your imagination tonight, I want to give you the way the Lord laid it on my heart. Get me this green wire there, Brother Ray, and then get one more switch back there, and it's going to be a little darker, but I want you to go with me on a journey. Give me my light now. Through the halls of hell. In our imagination tonight, I wonder. If I imagine it tonight, there's a lot of places I've been. I've traveled all over this country. I'm getting ready to go to Orlando, Florida Monday and preach. And I've seen the Grand Canyon, been to Hollywood and New York City and everywhere in between. But there's one journey I never do want to take. Except just in our minds tonight. Let's suppose tonight that we had an angel. This angel from heaven was here. And let's say we had this angel tonight that would come and take us on a guided tour through hell. And I walked up to him tonight and I said, Angel, you come from heaven. You come from God. God sent him down here from heaven to the youth rally because there's boys and girls and teenagers here who are not saved. And I said, Angel, would it be possible, do you think God would allow it tonight? If we could just see, if we could just see through the halls of hell. Get me one more switch there, Brother Ray, on the right top. Right top. Now, ladies and gentlemen, not both of them, just one. Ladies and gentlemen, I wonder what you'd see if the angel revealed it to us. If he did. I wonder what we'd see tonight. You'll say, there it is. Well, tonight we would see and hear some awful, awful things. Not only tonight would we see and hear some awful things, but tonight it's you would see people that you've heard of. Let's go tonight just for a few minutes in the Bible. And in the Bible we go through and we see different people who died and went to hell. When people go to hell, they don't die. They stay alive forever and ever and ever. We would see a man there tonight in Genesis chapter 4. This man, his name is Cain. You see, in the Bible, there was two men. Adam and Eve had two sons, Cain and Abel. You know the Bible, you know the story. This is a true story, boys and girls. Cain and Abel. Cain came to and he, he, he said, I, I don't like my brother. I don't like my brother. I don't want my brother to live. And he was jealous because God accepted his brother. 
and not him. And so Cain slew his brother and became the first murderer. He became the first murderer. And ladies and gentlemen, tonight, if we went, if we went into hell, if we went into hell, we could see Cain tonight in an awful state. Let's look at him tonight if we could see him there. Oh God, am I my brother's keeper? Oh my, am I my brother's keeper? God, my, I thought my sacrifice was just as good. How did I know you wanted a blood sacrifice? I raised the best vegetables for the ground. Am I my brother's keeper? Oh, it hurts so bad it burns. Am I my brother's keeper? Oh, God. Tonight you would see him there. Cain has been in hell for four, over 4,000 years. He's been there tonight screaming in hell, ladies and gentlemen, for over 4,000 years. He killed his brother. But ladies and gentlemen, tonight we move on through the book of Genesis. And Genesis chapter 6, the Bible said God told Noah to build an ark. And he told Noah, he said, I'm going to drown the world. And he said, Noah, drown. I'm going to drown everybody. Their wickedness has come up before me. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it. I'm tired of putting up with your sins. I'm tired of letting you live like you want to live. And God put it up. We see the people in Noah's day as they begin to scream. And Noah, let us in. Let us in. Let us in. Let's look at them tonight as we see them in hell. Ladies and gentlemen, those people have been there over 2,000 years. They've been in hell for 2,000 years. Did you hear me tonight? They've been in hell for over 2,000 years. You say, preacher, you couldn't scare people. You listen to me tonight. You know what's wrong with churches tonight? Brother, we've got so much junk in our churches tonight. We need some good old-fashioned preaching on hellfire. And brother, that book said there's a hell. And I'm sitting here to tell you it's real, it's hot, and it never will go out. And the fire's burning tonight. Some of you parents will sit here and you'll criticize me. I know I'll get criticized for this, but if God saves one soul out of hell, brother, it'll be worth every bit that we put into this. I'm telling you, them people in Noah's day are in hell tonight. They're in hell screaming with demons laughing at them forever and ever and ever. For they've been there for 4,000 years. But tonight we move on. And as we move on, we see another man. As a matter of fact, we see this man. He was a famous man in the book of Matthew chapter 14. He was a king on earth. But when you die and go to hell, there's nobody no better than nobody else. Kings, princes, movie stars, athletes, uh, big shots, football players, basketball players are just down there with the poor, low-down people that live in the gutter and die in sin. Ladies and gentlemen, a man and woman running. Their name is Herod and Herodias. Herod and Herodias, they had John the Baptist's head cut off. You know the story. He was living in sin, had married his brother's wife and shacked up with her, and living in wickedness. And John said, it's not right. It's not right. You're doing wrong. They wouldn't repent. They would not repent. They just kept on laughing and making fun of God. And Herod, Herodias had that little girl come in and dance. And she put John the Baptist's head on a charger. And brother, she brought the preacher's head. And it holds them in hell tonight. Let's look at Herodias and Herod as they're in hell tonight. They're screaming there tonight. They've been in hell for 2,000 years. 
We move, ladies and gentlemen, to the book of Acts chapter 26. And over in the book of Acts chapter 26, there's another man. He's also a king. The Bible calls him King Agrippa. And the Bible said, all this stuff that I'm telling you is right in that Bible, laying in your lap. You say, well, I know a preacher that don't believe in hell. Well, somebody else jerk his salary out from under him, fire him, and run him out of town. Jesus Christ is the one who started uh, calling it hellfire. He's the one who said hellfire. Jesus was a hellfire preacher, and every preacher ought to preach on hell. You're a preacher here tonight, and you don't preach on hell, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Amen! If it's real, brother, you're a crook if you don't warn them. And if it ain't real, you're a hypocrite for acting like you believe it. Ladies and gentlemen, we see a man in the Bible named King Agrippa. In Matthew chapter 27, he heard the great Apostle Paul preach, the greatest of all preachers. And as he heard the Apostle Paul preach tonight, ladies and gentlemen, this man, King Agrippa, trembled and shook and said, You almost persuaded me to be a Christian. No, no, God, I can't be here. I heard Paul preach. I almost became a Christian, God. No, God. Oh, God, it's so hard. No, God, no. Ah, my, tonight, he's been there for 2,000 years, ladies and gentlemen. But listen to me, tonight. Those are just people in the Bible. I could go on and on and on telling you stories about people in the Bible. I could tell you about Judas who betrayed the Lord for 30 pieces of silver. He's been there 2,000 years. He's burning the night. I had a young lady call me one night. She's 18, 17, 18 years old. She said, are you that preacher that preaches about rock music and all that stuff? And I said, yes, ma'am. She said, do you believe in demon possession? I said, yes, ma'am. She said, well, I, I've sold out my soul to the devil. I said, no, ma'am. No. She said, yes, I have. Don't you realize that you're going to burn in hell? She said, I don't care. I'll burn Satan. I said, ma'am, don't you realize tonight... Don't you realize tonight that if you were in hell for five seconds, you'd change your mind? She said, oh no, I'm willing to burn for Satan. And ladies and gentlemen, I told her, I said, I'll tell you what you do. You go in that kitchen and you turn that burner on that stove on a red hot color of that light back there. It's like that. And you can't hold your hand on it for two seconds. And then you tell me you're willing to go burn for Satan. I've heard of girls say to hell, I'm going to hell. Listen, you're crazy. I would go to hell for no, no boy, no girl, no mom, no dad, no nothing. Nobody's worth going to hell for. Your friends ain't worth going to hell for. Your parties ain't worth going to hell for. Nothing, nothing is worth going to hell for. You burn forever and ever and ever. But ladies and gentlemen, let me show you something tonight. We move. We move from the Bible. You see, in the Bible, we have a bunch of records of people dying and going to hell. But tonight, I want to show you some more modern. Here's a man who worked till he was 62 years old. He was planning on retiring. He done bought him a motor home and a boat and a place on the lake. He said, I'm going to retire and enjoy my life. He didn't have time to go to church. He didn't have time to come to God. He didn't have time to read his Bible or pray. But all he thought about was retiring. He was 61. He would have been 63 now. But two years ago, one year before he retired, he started having chest pains. He's been in hell about two years. Let's look at him tonight. Oh, the door, man! I'm just beginning to live! I never felt better in my life! Oh, it's so hot! God help me! I'm just beginning to live! I feel good! Oh, God help me! Help me! Ladies and gentlemen, he's been burning for two 
years. You can't hold your hand on that eye for two seconds. It's in your mouth. It's in your eyes. It's on your feet. It's on your elbows. You scream and beg God for a drop of water on your tongue. Tonight, we see some teenagers. Only three weeks ago. Three weeks ago, they went to their high school prom. They were out in a car. They were partying. They were drinking. They was living it up. Only three weeks ago, they were trying to see it hit 100 miles an hour. They didn't see that truck coming. They've been in hell three weeks. Hey, let's see it hit 100. No! Hey, let's see it hit 100. Woo! And you, you were supposed to be Christian. You claimed to be good Christian. You never told me. You never told us about this place and how it was and how real it was. You were supposed to be Christian. That's what they're doing in hell tonight. The Bible said there's weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. Brother, there's people dropping in there tonight while I'm preaching. I want to say tonight, if you as Christian young people, you have a responsibility before God to tell your friends at school and your family and friends. You say, well, they'll laugh at me. Brother, they'll hate you and cuss you one of these days. If you don't tell them, there's a hell. I thank God my mama set me on her knee when I was about four or five years old. And she said, Danny, there's a heaven. There's a hell. She sung to me, hell is an awful, awful place. Lord, I want to go to heaven. Hell is an awful, awful place. And I'm glad when I was 18 years old, I found out what mama was talking about. When the Lord come down and save my soul. And brother, I've been hell proof ever since. I don't know about you tonight, but I thank God I'm not going to hell. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I thank God that I'm not going to hell. Glory to God. I'm glad that I'm not going to hell. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, man. Hallelujah. I'm glad that I'm not going to hell. You don't have much to shout about, but if you're not going to hell, you ought to shout the roof off this building. Amen. Glory to God if he never done nothing else for us. But save us. I'm glad I'm not going. They tell me if an ant, listen to me, a little ant, if you took that ant and put it on a steel ball the size of planet Earth, and you let that little ant crawl around on that steel ball till it wore it down to the size of a marble, you're just starting in hell. Five million, a hundred billion, a hundred billion, 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 and then a hundred billion, 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 and then a billion times that, and a billion times that, and a billion times that, and a billion times that. Wow, glory, it's good to be saved. God's people ought not ever complain about nothing. Brother, it don't matter how bad we have it down here. Glory to God. Brother, we're not going to burn in hell. Thank God. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, I can't hardly get over it tonight that the Lord would save an old dog like me and let me go to heaven. If you're here tonight and you're not saved, you better not leave this place. I wouldn't leave this place. I wouldn't leave this place. I wouldn't leave this place. They say if a bird went down there to... Myrtle Beach picked up a grain of sand and he turned and flew all the way to the moon and dropped that grain of sand. He turned and flew all the way back to Myrtle Beach, got another grain of sand. He turned and flew all the way back to the moon, dropped it. That's two. By the time that bird moved all the sand on the beach up to the moon and back again, a million times you're just getting started Amen. 
And we want you to know tonight that God loves you. And He don't, He's not concerned with what you've done. He wants you to get saved tonight. You say, I'm too young. Uh, if you're old enough to know you're sinning, you're old enough to know you need to get saved. And you live in this part of the country, you know better. I want to show you another one. This girl has only been in hell for two days. She went to hell Thursday. She went to hell Thursday. She hadn't been out drunk. She hadn't been out partying. But she knew she is a sinner. She's only 11 years old. She's been in hell for two days. God! I'm not supposed to be here! I'm too young to die! I'm only 11 years old! God, no! I'm only 11! Tonight, hell is a madhouse. That's why they call it hell. That's the worst thing you can say to somebody. That's the worst thing there is. Everybody in this building is on your way to heaven or hell right now. There's no such place as purgatory. It does not exist. The Bible says heaven or hell. If you were in hell tonight, you'd be crazy. Because the Bible says they're weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. You would see all these people I've talked about and a million more in hell. Am I my brother's keeper? Am I my brother's keeper? No! 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 no. Preacher, preach! We heard the preacher preach! Oh God, I'm most out for slaying I never felt better in my life! Come on! It's a madhouse! It's a madhouse! They're screaming! They're begging God to help! They're begging God to help them! They don't understand! They don't understand! They've lost their mind. They've gone crazy. They're in hell forever and ever and ever. And they never, ever, 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 ever get out. And you won't either. If I was you here tonight and I had somebody in my family that wasn't saved, I'd be done at this altar begging God to save them. If I was here tonight, if I was you here tonight and I had somebody that I, I know wasn't saved, I'd be praying that God give me the boldness to witness to them and get on your knees before God until you get the burden on them. I'd be down on my knees asking God to help me to witness to my family, to them people you work with. It don't matter if they make fun of you. It ain't going to matter when they're in hell. Let's get on the right with God tonight. And do what God wants us to do. Play it. Oh, just play it. Stand with me tonight. Stand with me. God's speaking to your heart tonight. Give me just the green light, right? Just the green cord. Let God speak to our hearts tonight. Let's sing tonight. They're coming. They're coming from all over this building.